Live Catfish Weekly with Doc and Lyle. How are you guys doing tonight? Doc, doing well. Doc is 95 and smoking hot in Buffalo, Missouri. Yeah, same here in Springfield, but I'll take it over the cold. Well, I like the heat. Well, it's a good thing you do because we got it, baby. We got it. Yeah, it's 73 in the house. My air conditioner is struggling a little bit because it's got it packed with uh, cottonwood. So tomorrow I got to take that cover off of it and spray it down. Well, uh, it's better to do that than to be miserably hot. Yeah, and we've been through that. I'm too old to uh, sit there and suck up that hot weather. <laughs> hey, guess what? What? What's this? That's a demon dragon. It is, and I got some new ones in the mail today. And these things are awesome looking. I just they make a lot of noise. I Man, want to show awesome. these babies. These are the backwoods catfishing editions. Them are really, really bad looking. And this is the Muddy River Catfishing Edition. And speaking of Muddy River Catfishing, next week we'll have Chris Flores on here. Yeah, I watched him last night with, uh, he was on with Yakin with Sarah. That's fact. This I watched is, him last night. This is the Borderline Catfishing Edition. I That, that baby's bright now. It really is. That, that thing, if they can get any sunlight to wherever you're fishing, they can see that, I'm quite sure. Yeah. And then this one is the PGA Bottom Feeders Edition. Kind of got the flame action going on. Yeah. But, it's a bleeding bait type thing. I think that's pretty cool too. Yep. But man, you can hear them babies coming from a mile away. And they don't never get tore up. They just retie and go on. I love them things. They're awesome. Scott Manning, Tennessee River Monsters. If you need demon dragons, get a hold of Scott. He's got them. And they work. They spin bait better than anything I've ever seen. Doc, we got we got a live deal going on with Eddie Ann and Spencer White. They are live on the Red River in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Hello. Hi. What's happening? Well, we're not fishing. I know. That's no, I'm sorry but, to hear that. but you are. I guess we can live it through you through your boat. <laughs> yeah, you need a new job, I guess. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. Man, it looks like you guys got some beautiful weather up there. We do. Can you guys see the rods behind us by chance? As a matter yeah. of fact, we can, and we'll let you know if something hits. If you get a bite, there'll be somebody in chat that will light us up, I'm quite sure. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> well, as close as Spencer is to them, he ought to be able to hear them when they hit. Yeah. It's about 70 degrees and sunny and beautiful here right now. We couldn't couldn't ask for better weather it's at the moment. Humid. Man, oh man. You guys are pre-fishing for a tournament this weekend, is that correct? Yeah, the Shills Boundary Battle. Uh, Brad Dirk, he's a local guide here. He puts it on, and uh, we come out every year and fish it, and we have a real good time, man. We catch monster channels out here. I've been up there before. It's an amazing fishery. Uh to have the, as many numbers and size of fish as they got, it is a really, really cool place to be. And uh, great folks to be around up there. They're all friendly and nice, and they're glad to see you when you get there. It's just a cool place. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to team up with a couple of the guys from Whisker Seeker on Wednesday, and we're all going to go out and do a little video together and hope that turns out well, too, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to show everybody it's okay to fish with guys that you compete against. Well, Sure. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. You guys have any questions, for Eddie, Ann, or Spencer, be sure to get them in chat so we can get them to them. Uh, they are fishing. If you have your your uh, screen blowed up where you can see them, you can see the rods out the back of the boat, and they are on the Red River in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And you guys are actually right in the city limits of Grand Forks, aren't you? Yeah, we've got a... A bridge over the water just i don't know 300 feet <laughs> 300 feet from us the cars going over every once in a while the the river runs right right through the center of town there's grand forks on the north dakota side and east grand forks on the minnesota side um diversion dam in the middle and the the tournament runs 
one stretch above the river or above the dam one day and below the dam the next day. Have you got current? Yeah, actually, they said on the on the radio today. I'm I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to fishing. I, I've been watching the weather patterns. I'll watch the wet uh, the, um, the water if it's going up, going down, and it's supposed to get minor flooding in Fargo, which is 55, 60 miles or something from here. So we're expecting that to come here, and I I like that when that water raises usually sparks the feed pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how it goes. I'd much rather see the water coming up than going down myself. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And from our understandings, they do this, they do the tournament this time of the year every year because it is the spawn. And it's an extremely tough bite. And uh, they're this year, apparently the, the fish are starting to come out of the spawn early, which is, it could be a record setting year. I guess we'll see here in about a week. When's the tournament? This weekend? It's this Saturday and Sunday. So, oh, Saturday and Sunday, a two-dayer. Now, what have you got for bait on your lines right now? I'm using cut sucker. Uh, Spencer's sitting on it. Just to... just chunking up a good old good old piece of sucker meat. I think this and gold eye are probably the two dominant baits on this river. Did you bring them with you, or did you acquire those while you was up there? I actually brought a bunch of frozen bait to pre-fish with, um, and then we get some fresh as the week goes on. We'll start fishing for bait. Okay. I like to have something to start out with. Yeah. So yeah. we always bring a little bit of frozen stuff with us. These I, I just got them three days before we came, so they're, you know, just as... About as, as fresh as you can get. Yeah, without being alive. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the safe way to do it. You can uh, bring it up there frozen. Nobody really has any qualms about that. It's bringing them live across state line that if you're going to get in trouble, that's where it'll be from. Well, with with we came from Wyoming. I, I told you about that. And I don't know how many AIS uh, boat inspection stations we had to go through to get here. Really? Yeah. They have them, they have them on all the borders now up in this area because... In Montana, there was uh, supposedly a, a larva of mussel found in the water. They haven't found anything since, but they're pretty. They're getting pretty hard on where we can go, what we can do. We have lakes where you can only put in at two ramps, and there's probably ten on it. Wow. But they they want to be checking every single boat that goes into every body of water every time to make sure that everything's drained out, clean, clean, dry drain is the the mantra for it. Well, you know, I, we run into that when we was up there, and that was the the most, um, uh, how do I want to say that? It was the, they worked at it harder to keep uh, foreign pe things out of their water than any place at, that I had ever been to to that day. And I was thrilled with the fact that they cared enough to keep that stuff out of there. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty neat to see them guys doing that stuff. And I think that uh, more places should take a look at what they're doing in that area. What they're doing is a good thing. The problem is it's not for all watercraft. It's, it's taken out on the fishermen and not on the kayakers, not on the canoers, not on the wakeboard boats. So the fishermen are the ones that end up suffering through it all and paying for the whole thing. You know, it's not, it's not every watercraft that goes in the water jet skiers and that's us only yeah so that's, that's, that's not right it yeah. should be anybody that's in that water that has anything that moves should be uh checked absolutely so yeah i i agree with that doc we got any questions in chat for them yeah somebody wants to know what their uh let's see where what what uh junior proctor big dog blue dog fishing wants to know what rigs are you using well so for a couple years i wanted to improve the zero rig um at home we fish a lot of rocks and we fish a lot of trees a lot of structure and the yellowstone river will eat probably 200 dollars worth of lead a year as well as hooks so i started tinkering with some stuff and the first prototypes i came up with were ugly i mean they were terrible looking uh, I was embarrassed to show them. I showed them to a couple guys. They said, oh, you know, well, that, that would work. And I finally was able to fine tune it. Um, I'll show you guys here in a second. I hear a lot that there's too many breaking points. 
And we, I mean, I'd hate to see it happen now. We've never had an issue with brakes. And they're not designed for every kind of fishing. They're definitely not designed for blues that you're going to suspend or anything like that. Uh, but for us up here in, the, in channel country, when we're fishing heavy structure, it's, it's called a whisker bomb. You guys tell me if I need to go out or in on that. Go up. Go back. Take it back towards you. There you go. So I have a swivel up here on the top where we tie our main line to. And I have a swivel with a quick clip down here. So this can never get any line twist in it. Not only that, with the heavy current we fish, line twist is an issue. But not only that, this has a 360 degree rotation on your circle hook. So I don't have to worry about my circle hook not hitting the corner of that fish's mouth. Mm -hmm. And so what do I, you call I, that, a whisker bomb? I do, yeah. And we designed, you know, I designed this and I fished with it for quite some time. We actually won a tournament this year using strictly these. Um, there's times where... You, you pattern them out. You, you put a leader on, you put a float on, you put whatever, however you do it. And there was a day where this is the only thing we could catch fish on. And we won that tournament with, with, with the whisker bomb. Nice. It's nice because you can use it to set your bait right into that structure you're fishing. You go over the top of something, you down scan it. You know there's a nice tree down there, a nice ledge, um, something. And you want to be able to drop that, that bait right there, right in front of those fish. This lets you kind of combat the current, combat anything else, and drop it just precisely where you want it to go, but then not have that extra leader to get tangled up in those branches, extra room for the fish to to get caught up and get stuck. So yeah. We like them. How many how many ounces is that? Is that eight? That this one's actually a six. And okay. I uh Hook Center USA took over manufacturing of them this year and we do a one, two, a Three, a four, and a six ouncer. Six ouncer, obviously, man, that's for some extremely heavy current. In front of diversion dam, something to that degree, we're going to throw these down. I have one ouncers on behind us. Nice. Very nice. That's that's a pretty innovative rig. And uh, How much is the poundage rating on that snap you're using to attach the hook? Oh, those are 80 pound. Maybe a little overkill for what we do, but you're not going to, you're not going to bin that out if you get stuck on a snag. That's right. You're breaking your hook or you're getting the whole thing back. So it's not a snap. Yeah. I, uh, I would much rather have overkill than not have it strong enough anytime. Yeah. Well, you know, we've kind of talked about this before <laughs> the issue catfishing right now is that you know there is new product coming out there's innovation in catfishing we don't have a company like berkeley or or something to that degree that's taking other people's ideas and creating them and mass producing them and spreading them through the united states for people to use we have individuals who are creating and hoping to make you know possibly um turn around some money to make more right and we're kind of stuck in that funk right now and it, it's you know it'd be nice to, to see a company come and, and buy these innovative ideas from people and create one company that we can see in Cabela's and Shills and uh, Academy Sports and, and spread it across the country, you know? Yep, that's, that's a great idea. If, it, if somebody could do it or take, take the initiative to make that happen, there is a lot of stuff uh, that could be produced. Now, I'm not saying it'll ever be like bass fishing where you got a new this or that coming out two or three times a week where everybody's going to make tons of money off of because it may never get to that point with what we do. But uh, every new deal, if, if somebody could take those ideas and produce them, they will be the innovators uh, with stuff to go down the road. Right. So you just got done fishing uh, Wyoming tournament. We did, yes. Done really well out there, I understand. We did, yes. Um, first lake tournament we ever fished, and Spencer and I did it together. And we had pretty pretty brutal weather. Uh, we had, on the first day we got there, there was 60 mile an hour wind, so we didn't get out. The second day, the wind calmed down just a little bit, and we got out for about two hours. And there was a, a man-made bridge that runs across the lake, and it had a, lot, a bunch of riprap around it. 
in those two hours I did, I, I downscan. I'm going to downscan and try to find as much structure as I can. Oh, we just had a good bite. I told you to go. <laughs> um, at any rate, go ahead. Got it? Oh, we missed it. That's all at right. Any rate, uh, in those two hours, Spencer caught one male that was probably about five pounds, and he had a, he, had, he was getting ready to spawn, but he also had a big stomach on him, so I knew they were in there feeding. So during the tournament the next day, it was about 50 degrees and, and raining. It rained for six of the eight hours, and uh, we put a pattern together based off that. We, we worked those rocks. We worked three different areas of those rocks, and we ended up winning that tournament just doing that. Man, that's amazing. Wow. And the Wyoming guys, they were, I think they were a little bit upset because there was four Montana teams and we swept one through four. Nice. <laughs> so now we're looking at creating the, you know, a rivalry with them and, and working on a traveling trophy and, you know, all that good kind of stuff that guys do. That's a great idea. Great idea. Now, it, the place you was at in Wyoming was quite a ways from you, uh, to where you're at now and it, it you still got to go home yep eddie's checking that rod behind me there the wyoming tournament was about three hours from where we live and then we live about 10 hours from where we're at right now so total travel time from saturday evening in wyoming to where we're at right now is about 15 hours of driving it's a little over 800 miles the other than your local tournaments that you guys do uh, right there at your house, there's nothing that you go to that's uh, not a long ways, is there? No. <laughs> not at all. We got we to gotta travel quite a bit to, to get to any good water. I think it's closest flathead fishing we have is about eight hours away. Closest blues are about 12 hours away. Oh, man. And I thought I had it bad. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, there's a question in chat. Wants to know what Spencer's biggest catfish is to date. 13.09 pounds. 13.09. That's a great fish. Yep. That, we got second place in, where was it? Heisham. Heisham. And that was the big fish. Spencer was uh, shore fishing. This was two tournaments ago. Spencer shore fished with another gentleman. Our, our water at home on the Yellowstone River is really high right now. It was flooding pretty bad, and we discussed it with Spencer. He spends a lot of time on the water with us, and he wasn't sure he felt safe going out on the boat with us that day. We've got a pretty small boat, sits real close to the water, and just safety issues, we opted to, to have him shore fish that day. So he fished with another gentleman, and... Um, about two hours into the tournament, they called. They said that they were calling fish out already. They they had their, their five fish. They were catching them. They were doing absolutely great. About, uh, Spent, yep, top five. about three o'clock, Sean had caught another nice fish. We were going to pull it out, and we came back. One fish was belly up, and we checked. The rest of them were on the body. We're on the bottom of the ice chest, not moving. Their aerator went out. They lost their entire basket of fish. Oh. And with two, two hours, hours left, left to go. So they they buckled down and they kept fishing. And in two hours, they caught five more fish, weighed in 44 pounds of channel cats at that tournament, including Spencer's 13 pounder. Wow, that's amazing. So that, that Never show you. You don't give Never up. Never give up. That's exactly Never give up. right to the bitter end every time, whatever it takes to do what you got to do. And that's that's a great story, Spencer. That's a great story. If your dad hurries up and gets him right enough, maybe he can get in on some of the show. Spencer actually won. Uh, he got second place, first place short team, first place kids division, and big fish in that tournament. Wow. That's a so heck he walked, of a day. He walked away not only with a bit of money, but four plaques. He, I mean, I was pretty proud of what he did. I remember seeing the pictures. It was awesome. Hey, Doc, you know what this means right now? Yeah, it's time to spin the wheel. It is, as a matter of fact. Hey, Spencer, pick me out a number between one and five, and let's just see if we can pick someone out to win some free stuff. Three. 
Three it is. One, two, three, and the winner is K Bug Clark. K Bug Clark. See what we can conjure up for you tonight. We got a fish on. All right. Hey, Bug Clark, Hooker's Terminal Tackle. See which ones they are. You have won a package of Reaper hooks. If you'll get a hold of James Arwood with Hooker's Terminal Tackle, tell him you won a prize on the Rig Wrap Prize Wheel. He will get them shipped out right out to you. You're going to love them. They're great hooks. James is a great sponsor to Catfish Weekly, and we are so glad that you won those hooks tonight. Hey, Bug Clark. Say something, man. Bring the feedback to you. I'm I'm trying to stay out of the way here. Eddie's fighting this fish. It's it's a pretty good size one. Spencer's standing by, ready with the net. Thank you, Northwoods Angling. And if you'll keep talking, it'll keep the camera on. Stay on, so we stay can... on us over here. Yep. Yeah. All right. We have we got a little bit of splashing at the back of the boat there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh yeah. All right. Spencer's, Spencer's about to get it in the net here, just off the end of the boat. This is a good size fish. This is a real good size fish. That Eddie's using my Lady Warrior rod, made by Warrior Cat Rods. It's a pink rod, very, handles very nicely. It's real uh, professional grade rod, but sized down just a couple inches for the ladies to handle. I like it because I could reach my reel a little bit better, put the butt up against my hip and then reach that reel. That's nice fish. Fish in the boat. That's Live nice. on Catfish Weekly. How about that? How about that? Mr. Bomb. Red River. <laughs> Dandy. That's another catfish. Nice fish. That's a great channel, Cat. Is that one of the real dark ones? We've caught some pretty dark ones up there. No, this one's this one's kind of a lighter gray. Um, we've seen them real black here too. That testosterone starts in them, and they get real dark with those great big heads. Um, this one's this one's a little bit lighter. I don't think it's light enough to be a female. And has that one got the real long whiskers on it? Yeah. It it does have some pretty long whiskers on it. I noticed that the the channel cats up north, whether it be there or Wisconsin, that we've caught. It seemed like they got half again longer whiskers on them than what they do down in our area. Yep, and they'll, they're they're real thick and big, right at yep. where they attach on to, and then miles long, the yeah, great big right. long whiskers on them. <laughs> yep, I've, right. I've seen that too. Yeah, he has some nice whiskers on him. Heck yeah, yeah. man, that's a great fish. What did it weigh, Ed? It was uh, just about 11 pounds. That's a great fish. You can see they're coming out of spawn just by how skinny he is. He is not, skinny. Not much of the belly there. Yeah. Well, one thing's for sure, in about a week, he'll be full up. And he'll look a whole lot different. Thank you, Catfish Obsession. We appreciate it. We, and back uh, in the water, we, we CPR our fish. Absolutely. That's why they keep, that's why they produce fish like that up there. They don't take every one of them out of the water, they're put back to reproduce. Catfish, well, have, please contact me after the show, and I'll get you set up for all that. They have some good regulations here on the red. Um, they have an over-under. They've got a slot limit on them, and that we we deal with in the tournament. So during the tournament, we're allowed to keep two fish over 24 inches and one, one fish under 24 inches, and that's, that's state law here. One fish over 24 inches per fisherman. And that having that slot limit keeps the size of these fish here real good, real big. You you start heading a little bit further north. Um, the, the dam at Manitoba is kind of known worldwide as producing some of the biggest channels in the world. And yep. we're, we're only about 60 or 70 miles south of that where we're at right now. And we, we definitely see the size difference in the channels here. Yeah. That's the bucket list place for me is to, is to get up the up in uh, Canada to the river up there or the dam up there. I can't wait to do that one of these days. It's going to be really cool. Uh, we talked to Luke and them about 
uh, meeting up there later on this year, maybe trying to make that happen. So it'll be a lot of fun. Sorry about the interruption. That's <laughs> no, that's all right. Hey, this is a first. I think it's a first. Well, it might Luke did Luke catch some fish when he was on live one time? I uh, don't remember if I don't remember if he did. He's in chat, so if he did, he'll let he can let yeah, us. Yeah, I know. think I think he we saw him catch a carp or something. I don't remember what it was. Well, no one Luke there, no telling. No telling. Well, the spot we're fishing, the spot we're fishing now, Ann caught her personal best on the red last year at, and uh, what it is is. On the red, it's not what you can see. The structure, you, you have to put time on the water and look for that underwater structure. And uh, we're fishing right off a rig wrap bank, and it drops, and then there's a big boulder, and then it drops again. So we're, we're in front of that big boulder, around it, and behind it, trying to coax those fish to come out to our bait. Nice. nice. Now, how, how deep is the water you're at? Uh, it's, it's ranged anywhere from 17 to about 22 feet. Okay. So I, I have to, I have a Helix nine, uh, Mega, and then I have an eight fifty nine Di on my boat, so I can run my side imaging and my down imaging at the same time, and then I mark my spots obviously. Uh, but what I one thing I do I don't I've never really seen a lot of guys do is I'll mark the underwater structure, I'll go above it and then I'll go to my my map, where it shows the the river the lake wherever I'm at. And I can use my cursor and know exactly how far back that structure is from me. Right, right. And then I get my line counter reels. I use line counter reels for that reason. If it's 80 feet behind me, I'm going to get my line counter reel and cast at about 78. And then I'll stagger them like that, and I'll know exactly where to cast if I miss another fish. It amazes me how accurate those line counter reels are. When I first started using them, I got made fun of by guys. Oh, you use those to catfish? I said, oh, yeah. And now now the guys up north, you know, I don't know how long other people have been using them, but now the guys up north, more and more, you're seeing more and more of them because of the idea is when, when Spencer, uh, Spencer and I were fishing Wyoming, I was casting at 40 feet because there was a big rock there. Yep. When If I missed a fish or I caught one, where did I go? I went back to 40 feet. And being able to, to, to replicate each time ended up putting a lot of fish in the boat for us. Yep. I tell you, I love them for planter board fishing. Love them. Yeah. I've got the little ones now, the crappie ones that I'm using for the catfish uh -huh. on the lakes. And that those are, you can run like three ounces or like three eighths of an ounce of weight behind it. And it does a real good job of picking up them fish that are up in that water column. That's awesome. So what's going on with you guys? What's what's going on with the Catfish Weekly National Championship? I heard there was a change. Yeah, it's uh, we, we give it to uh, Daniel and Jody, and uh, they're going to be taking it to Wheeler Lake in Alabama. So you guys are done? You just letting it letting it be taken over by them now, huh? Yep, just give it to them. All right. We do a lot of stuff that way. Give give uh, Krista Katz to Alex and um, come up with good ideas, but uh, I don't have the desire to run them. That never was something we was going to do for a long period of time. And right after we decided what we was going to do it, uh, we had already talked to Dan about doing it after that. So uh, we knew it was not something we was going to do for an extended period of time. No, but to take on such a, take such initiative in something, man, it, I mean, that's it, grateful to see it, you know, keep going, whether it's in your hands or somebody else's. Uh, it had to start somewhere. It was, there was a need for it. Uh, it worked out. Uh, they will do great things with it. Like I say, it, it never was a, a plan for us to do it over a year. Uh, and, and the, the, thing was to find the correct people to do it now uh, i never intended for it to go to alabama however but you know that's what they want to do and, and that's fine uh there's good fish in alabama but uh there is a greater need to have a tournament of magnitudes in the central united states and not have all of them down south uh yeah there really is you know it's like for you guys 
you, you guys are traveling. It doesn't matter where you go. It's a long way to get to, to big fish water. So uh, everything that gets moved further south than we are is that much further for you guys to be there. Well, we, we would be looking at, it's about a 24 to 26 hour drive to get to Tennessee. We'd probably be looking about 30 to 32 hours to get to Alabama. Yeah, that just makes it hard. Central, there's gotta be, there's gotta be uh, some common sense used to, to make some of these bigger tournaments in the central part of the United States. Uh, we originally wanted to do that on the Mississippi River, say in the St. Louis area, but for what we was planning on having, there's not any boat ramps down there can handle massive quantities of people. Um, and the places that there is don't have the fish that people want to fish for. Uh, so it's a give and take. You got to, you got to figure out the best thing to do with the, the easiest way to do it and, and make it happen. Yeah. Well, we do, you know, we run a, a catfish angler tournament series and, we're looking to expand it into more states. Right now, Steve Johnson and I out in California are working on a uh, tournament in August on Clear Lake, and we're looking at bringing more of that out towards the West Coast as well. You know, uh, like we talked about last time, man, letting people know that the Northwest has something to offer when it comes to trophy fish. There's not a lot of places outside the Northwest you catch chan uh, trophy channels, you know? That's right. You know, uh, the biggest channel can not come from North. You know, it wasn't caught here. It was caught in Wisconsin. And we caught some great channel cats on the Red River. But uh, we, we really had a had a heyday when we was up in Wisconsin that time. Yeah. And there's only so many places that hold those those trophies like that. Clear Lake, right. California is one of them. Red River is one of them. The, uh, the lake you're talking about in Wisconsin is one of them. Mendota. You know, there, there's one in, uh, I think it's Kansas, Kansas or Nebraska, Calamus Lake. Yeah, Calamus. So you hear, you hear about them. Calamus is such a small lake and very small parking areas. It'd be hard to have a, a tournament of massive size there. You know what I mean? Right. But yeah, there's there's some good places, and and I've seen some of the pictures of the fish that Steve catches out in California. Holy crap, them are giants. Yeah, yeah, and California has flatheads and blues as well. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But the channel cat, they got they got it going on out there. But, you know, I'm not sure why the northern states have the, the great channel cats they do. Uh, I know that they're not harvested nearly as much as they are in the central and southern part of the United States. Uh, and their growth uh, season is shorter than what we have. So it has to be some of the stuff that they're eating and the fact that nobody is taking them all out of the water. Well, I, th I think it has to do too with they're not being eaten by other right. fish either. Right. They're, you know, blue, blues and, and flats will eat cat, channel cat fry and up here they don't, they don't have to compete with that. So right. yeah, they kind of got their run of things up there. There's not any, uh, it, it's not that there's not some other predatorial fish up there, but let's face it, what's going to mess with them big channel cat. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're just, they're bad. Well, we're looking forward to expanding our territory and moving into the blue and flathead areas, you know, potentially next year. Um, like we have a son we're trying to graduate and after that we plan on doing a lot more traveling. It also just boils down to being able to have that money to, to do the things that we want to do. So at some point we're hoping that we can have an official circuit where guys can make a living, girls, you know, kids, teens, families can make a living off of catfishing. Is it going to happen? I don't know. Are there rumors it's going to happen? There are. And I really hope they hold true so that we can start getting on that. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, um, at this point, the only people that I know of that's making money, making a living uh, catfishing are guides. Do you know of anybody else that's doing any more than that, Doc? No. Yeah. There, there's a few guys that, that guides that make a living guiding for catfish terms. Or catfishing, uh, but other than guides, I know no one that's making a living fishing catfish tournaments. Right, right. Which it, I mean, we we would like to see that. It it's growing every day. It's amazing how much it's growing. Um, it's just get the right people doing the right things and and doing it for the anglers and watching it progress. 
That's right. You know, Eddie, Doc and I have talked about this many times. Uh, we've been both been at it for several years. And 20 years ago, um, we didn't either one. I, I know for me for sure, would never believe that catfishing, tournament catfishing would have progressed like it is now. Yeah. Yep. Everybody wanted to see it grow, but nobody ever thought it would. And um, there's always... There's always, always uh, some things that go on that everybody's not going to agree with, but uh, catfishing is still in its infancy. It's going to get a lot bigger and, and grow a lot stronger as things progress. Absolutely. Let's just hope it's in our lifetime. Uh, that's, you know, I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't grow too fast. That's the part that scares me of, of it getting too big too fast. Um, it took bass a long time to get to the point where it is, and they had the right people running it. That's another problem that I see is the wrong people doing the wrong things to make things happen just because they want it to happen. And if things are not done the correct way, it'll surely falter. Yep, absolutely. Well, I'm surprised you haven't caught another fish. You've been It's been 15, 20 minutes. Well, on the red, believe it or not, this time of the year, if you're not waiting 20 minutes, you're not catching anything. <laughs> First time I came up here, where we, in Montana, we we power fish. If you don't have a fish in five minutes, you move. That's yep. how fast the fish hit. And the first time we came here, I said, for four days, I didn't catch anything. And I was, I was really beating myself up. And someone told me, wait 20 minutes. And it, it about killed us. Yeah, to go from moving every five oh, minutes yeah. to sitting in one spot for twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and no joke, we hit that nineteen minute thirty second mark, and we started getting bites. And as soon hmm. as we started waiting that full twenty minutes, that's when we started catching fish. It took us four days and somebody telling us to figure that out, but that made all the difference with it. I keep wow. getting bites on my end, end pole out here. I'm watching it. Something's been messing with my pole. <laughs> I guess I hey. someone else want to fish, huh? Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, give away an offshore tackle hat in the chat room. Give me a number. Did they hear me? And pick out a number between one and five for Doc. Let's go with two. Two it is. One, two. Well, I can't win it. So I'll go to the next one. Twisted Fishing TV. You are the winner of an offshore tackle hat. Please get with me after the show with your name and address, and I'll get it out to you this weekend. And thanks for being in the chat room. Twisted Fishing TV. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. What, what's going What's going on in the chat room? Well, uh, uh, yeah, there's they're doing a lot of talking amongst themselves. Uh, all right. We have a bunch of folks in chat tonight. Yes, we do. A bunch. You guys gonna? I imagine you'll be at the catfish conference next year, huh? Uh, that's the plan as of now. Any big, any big uh, reveals for the next one? You guys have anything in the works? Any plans? No, we um, haven't heard anything. Haven't heard anything. No, I, I see uh, the conference making some posts uh, every few days, which is is good that they're staying involved with uh, with stuff. But I haven't heard any. Thing about any new developments or plans or anything like that. The last I knew, they was looking for a bigger venue, and that'll be awesome if uh, if they find something and get the, all of the uh, of the uh, vendors that should be there to be there. There's some that should be there that haven't been there the last year or two, and they should be there uh, no matter what. I mean, they, they just some of them guys that are not going really need to be at the conference well what was tough for us is we we our flight got delayed in minnesota we ended up landing late we got about three hours of sleep showed up 
And I'll tell you what, it went by so fast and we had so much fun. I actually looked at Ann and asked her if I was really there. Because it was that, it was like that. That, um, that thing has grown unbelievably every year. Oh, yeah. Whew. Uh, here's a question. What line do you use? Braid or mono? I use 30 pound big game, uh, monofilament. Yeah. I love it when somebody uses mono because that's all I use. Well, you know, I, I, I tried braid and I tried braid and, and the structure that we fish, as soon as you get yeah. a nick in that, you're better off just throwing it in the garbage. I've never had no problems with it. I fish rocks. I fish wood. I don't, I don't have, I have a lot less problem with braid, but I'm using 80 pound braid too. Well, I haven't really seen any pictures of you with fish lately. So either you're well, missing I or you're lately. <laughs> <laughs> I went to braid and uh, I can't go back. I, I don't even want the stuff in my boat. I mean, I don't want no stretch. You let the drag of your reel and the action of your rod do the work. There's no need to have any other stretch in there. And when you do get hung up, you don't have to walk back and forth from one end of the boat to the other to break it That's, that's true. <laughs> that's the biggest you know, thing that I got against monofilament right there is the yeah, strip. You don't, have to, walk, you don't have to walk back and forth because that, that braid just breaks because it's got a neck. I, I've not had that problem. I've not had that problem. I usually break off sinkers and stuff, but I've not broke off any braid. I, I use 80 pound. We've used 80 pound up at our river and it, it didn't hold up. And maybe, maybe I needed, I tried about three different brands of braid and I, there was one that was decent power pro and, and, uh, I just, I can't do it. I, I'm a monofilament all day. I've used, um, I've used power pro for years and years and I still have it on some reels and I really like it, but this 832 suffix is by far the best I've ever used. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I use braid only uh, when I suspend fish. That's about the only time. Come on, Spencer, catch another one. When I suspend, I use braid. Otherwise, I don't use it. Yeah. If if you done if you was back here where we're at bumping and bouncing and walking baits, you'd be using it. Well, I'll tell you what. You're more than welcome to come to my river anytime, and you bring your braid, and we'll see who catches fish. Well, I promise you, if I come, it'll be with braid. There won't be no monofilm on nothing I got. <laughs> for years, now, Eddie, honest to God, for years I wouldn't let Cindy use braid because I was afraid she'd get her hand in the wrong spot and it'd cut her. Because not knowing braid can be dangerous. If you get your finger something in the wrong spot and you get a lot of pressure against it, it'll cut you to the bone before you can turn it. But she got to using some of my stuff and I got to watching her and she was careful and uh, we haven't had any, any monofilament on anything in years. It's because yeah. I'm catching all the fish. She's catching all the fish, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They want to know what your reels are, Eddie. I'm using. I, I actually just picked them up. They're they're the pinned um, warfare line counting reels. Um, I usually use Daiwa line counting reels, and Ann has a couple ENS bully reels that she uses. I've had I, I I've been using different reels <coughs> for a few years to see which ones hold up and at an economical price because not everybody can afford a hundred fifty two hundred dollar reel, um, and honestly the Daiwas have been some of the best reels that I've owned. I used yeah. Daiwas for years. I really liked them, but uh, they're they're not an Abu Garcia or a Finn. See, in every Abu Garcia I've ever had, I've blown out within a year. So I just, I started venturing out and checking out other stuff. I can't re remember one other than a paw breaking in one that I've ever had any problems with other than cleaning them. Yeah. And I, I, I hear 7,000. I'm sorry. I quit using 7,000s because they weighed too much. I didn't want to, I didn't want to fight the extra weight. There's no need for it. Yeah. And I hear it both ways. I hear guys that say that they love them, and I hear guys that say they hate them. And it's no different than uh, rods or line or anything else. It's all just what, what you're confident with, you know. That's mm -hmm. right. I, I don't think there's any one right answer to what's the, the best rod, what's the best reel. It's, it all comes down to confidence. What, what you feel comfortable doing, what you like, 
what works best for you. There's so many, then that's, we talked about this at the conference. That's one of the most wonderful things about the catfishing industry right now is we finally have choices. You finally have options on what you want to use and how you want to use it. Yeah. Confidence and, and uh, everybody has a personal preference. And if you prefer one thing, like me and my braid, I, you know, I prefer that. And Eddie prefers his, his uh, monofilament. So does doc. That don't mean we all can't get in a boat and fish together. It just means well, you make fun of them you while we're <laughs> you just said don't put them in your boat, so I'm not welcome. <laughs> we'll get an <knocked> boat. <laughs> what, a, what a lot of guys, you know, what a lot of guys I, I see a lot of bickering about is is uh, if you promote a product, a hooker's terminal tackle hook, a warrior cat rod, etc., and you're on their pro staff, they don't want to listen to you because they think you're a salesman. With me and the companies that we fish for, I would never ask them to be or had or take a. Um, an offer from them if I didn't believe in their product. If I didn't like their product, there's no way I would ever have it in my boat and say yes. That's right. So we advocate for products that we know work for us. Is it going to work for everybody? Absolutely not. But it works for us. And we're going to, it's not one of those things where it's the best. It's the best for us. It's not the best for everybody. Yep. That's 100% correct. And, and uh, uh, you know, People have to understand that for progress, regardless of whether you like braid or mono or Abu Garcia's or Daiwa's or pins or whatever the case may be, or warrior cat rods or big cat fevers or whatever they are, you have to be able to be to be able to talk about them without somebody sticking their foot in it and trying to make you think that there's something wrong because they don't use it or you don't use what they use. It's not about that. It's making the sport grow, and that's how you make the sport grow. There is a question here from Glenn at Rig Wrap. I want to know which one of the three of you is the better fisherman. Me. Hey, Glenn. I'm ready, baby. <laughs> I am ready. Tournament ready. The answer is me. Yeah, Sp Spencer's, Spencer's a hell of a fisherman. He catches some um, when nobody else is, and... The only, has, has caught some of the biggest ones. The only problem with Spencer is, you know that dog from Up when they say squirrel and he stops and looks around? He does that. He'll be, he'll be sitting there with the net trying to catch a butterfly when it, um, his rod's been. And how old is he? What's that? How old is Spencer? He's 12. He's 12. Well... That, that's that's the way that goes. Another couple of years, and uh, he gets a couple more of them. If you get around <clears throat> 15 pounds of channel cat, things are fixing to pick up then. Well, in a couple of years, he's going to discover girls, and they're never going to see him. Well, that does happen. I will warn you right up front. It does happen. So I got to take advantage of it now, you know. That, that's a fact. That's a fact. You know, um, if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd like to invite Glenn in here from Rig Wrap so he could tell us about some new stuff he's got going. Absolutely. We'd love that. All right. Let me see if I can get him a link sent here. And you guys can continue on, Doc. While we're waiting cast them out boy that's a nice current i like that current that's been running behind you mm -hmm. now are you are you guys against a bank yeah. where you're at or are you anchored down you're against a bank against a bank a couple rocks we had to find a spot that was in a little bit of shade so the, the video looked better. When we were out in the middle of the river, the sun was shining right right at the camera and everybody was in shadow. So Yeah. So it wasn't our first choice in spots to fish, but it it's working. There's a tree stump with surprisingly good cell reception. Yeah. Yeah, that was the other thing. We had to find where we had the most most bars to get good service here. Oh, okay. So you're working off the phone. Phone. It's been yeah. good tonight. Yeah, I got a message from him the other day. Uh, Ann sent me a message <coughs> to do the show on the phone on their phone because someone forgot the laptop. Because Eddie and I had already done a test on their computer, 
And I said, well, sure, you know, if you have phone signal, we'll be able to do it. I personally have not done it, but you've done it. And several of the guests we've had have done it shows on the phone. So I knew it could be done, but I could, I didn't know if I could tell them how to do it or not, but uh, we had to send them a couple of link, a couple of different ways this afternoon, but uh, she popped right in and man, wherever they're at, at, they must be pretty close in because they have really, really good uh, signal and great audio and all that stuff. They want to know what kind of a boat you're fishing out of. I have a 16 foot tracker that I put a uh, <laughs> jet pop on the motor. Awesome. Hey, so Glenn. I, 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 hey, guys. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Hey, Ann. Spence. Eddie, they're out fishing you, pal. <laughs> That's what it's all about, Glenn. They're out fishing. You know, I, I, I think Spence has probably got you both beat. Well, that's good. That means I did a good job. That's right. I think it's all, I think it's all Ian's doing. You're probably right. <laughs> What's going on, Glenn? I heard some, uh, I heard some all news. All right. We're going to uh, make an announcement here for everybody uh, real quick. I don't want to interrupt what's going on there, but you brought up the case. And everybody's been asking us for a very, very long time about the new uh, rig pack cases. After, what has it been, almost a year, three yeah. manufacturers. Can't tell you how many different uh, um, uh manufacturers and cases and everything else that we went through absolutely terrible um but we finally got it and uh are you guys seeing me here yes yeah okay here we go it's the new rig pack 60 and i'll go through some of the features with it you can see that it's yellow trim versus the blue trim it's got a little bit You're can not you hear me okay Move back just a little bit. You're not getting it all in the uh, in the camera. Ah, okay. I'll back up here. Let me get some light on light on the subject. How's that? Great. There you go. Is that better? Yeah. All right. So that's the new rig pack case. We've got a net pocket on the outside. We've got D rings for uh, shoulder straps. Uh, we got the yellow trim, and we now have a label pocket on. Uh, all the uh, cases so you can label what you have inside. Here's one right here, and that's got a shoulder strap on it. You got shoulder straps laying around. You can, uh, but there you go. Very nice, very nice. And you see that okay? Can you hear me? Yeah, oh, yeah. we oh, yeah. got it. What happened? I don't hear you. You must have turned your volume off. Hello. You hear us, Glenn? Okay. I got I just I lost sound for a minute. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, we can hear you. No problem. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. So anyway, so there's the inside. All the pockets now have an elastic band. And what we're gonna do is because everybody's been wanting these is we're going to open it up for the first 100 that order the new rig pack, pre-order the, the, the new rig pack. And what's going to happen is, is that when you order it, the rig pack is $29.99, and we're going to throw in a combo pack, and we're going to throw in a pack of Easy Slides. It's over $58 value for $29.99 for the first 100 uh, customers only. We've got a limited amount. Uh, a lot of them are committed to our, our dealers and distributors around the world. Um, so uh, if you go to our Facebook page, there's a full video showing all the great features of the, of the rig pack. I don't want to take up everybody's time, but uh, I just wanted to... Uh, Announce it to everybody here uh, on Catfish Weekly, and I appreciate the opportunity and cutting into uh, Eddie and Ann and Spencer's time. Does uh, Eddie have a fish, or is he just kind of faking it? I think he's just checking bait. He caught one while ago, Glenn. 
Much longer we run in the show? Well, as long as you need. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to say we'll catch, stay on to you catch another fish, but you know that first one didn't take very long. <laughs> so, Glenn, how long will it be before these <coughs> are the uh, ones that they sent you for approval, and now you're in love with them? So, how long will it be? before the actual order will get here yeah what we did is uh we got in four um four pre uh, uh pre-production samples and we're going through testing with everything right now i've been we just got them in on friday uh and i've been playing with it all weekend long uh one of them i'm actually going to take and i'm going to beat the living heck out of the thing um i'll run it over with the car i'll you know i'll do everything i can to destroy it and see what it'll take uh, but, uh, probably in about two weeks, we'll uh, we'll, we'll, fix, we'll finalize our order. They'll go into production. Um, they'll take them about three to four weeks to produce. And then it gets uh, put on a ship, shipped to L.A., gets put on a train, <laughs> shipped down to Florida, gets on a truck, and sh- is delivered to me. Awesome. So we're looking at... Uh... Probably sometime in August we'll get them. Um, if we can get them in any sooner, we certainly will. Uh, we just took... Uh, we just got in all our easy slides, um, and I had these brought in Air Express because everybody is screaming for them again. Uh, they're all going in. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but uh, the easy slides uh, arriving in Walmarts here should be this week, next week, in about 2,000 Walmart stores across the country. Awesome. Awesome. And, and they can still order anything. From rigwrap.com. Yes. Yeah. Everything the, the the rig pack special is available only on uh, rigwrap.com. Uh, and again, it's limited, and we have to do it. It's limited to the first 100. Uh, just in, we just posted it on Facebook not a half hour ago, and there's already been six sold. So it's going fast. They won't last long. So anybody that no. wants one of the no. new ring crack packs, be sure to get your pre-order in. That's a heck of a deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is a heck of a deal. And while no. you're there, you might as well get some rig wraps while you're there. And and that way you can sit around and watch Catfish Weekly and tie up your new rigs. Well, that's the, be- that's the beauty of it, Lyle, is, it, is that, you know, with the, you know, with the rig rack, it slips right in here. So it's going to come with this fully loaded to go right in here. So what happens is, is that you you go out fishing, this comes with suction cups and straps. So you can pull this out with all the rigs you're going to start with, take your case, put it aside, and then take this and strap it or place it anywhere you want. So it's, it's pretty convenient. You know, the other thing too, and I think you guys will be interested, what we did was, is we, uh, we widened the spacing between the channels because I kept in mind all the uh, the dragging weights people are using. So now you can take your dragging weights and just lay them in here. Pretty cool. Oh, that's a, that's a great upgrade. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm sitting here playing with ours right now. We've got, <laughs> yeah, got, got our ceramic scissors. We got our, our rig wraps all tied up. We got some without beads. Some with beads. And, and while oh, you're at it, when you make your pre-order for the case, just go ahead and get you a pair of them Ceramax scissors and be done with it because you're going to wish you had them. The first time you see the set of them, you're going to wish you'd have went ahead and ordered them. I have yeah. a whole row of these little guys in the back of my tackle box that I carry with me, hand-tied myself. There you All go. right, way to go. Way to go. I, I, I appreciate the... Uh, the shout out there guys uh and showing everybody how you're using them glenn jerry uh, would like to know if the uh lure lockers or the red rig wraps will fit in the new cases no 
We actually have a, another case that we're working on right now, which uh, will go into pre-production in about 30 days. So when we get this order in, we'll have that next case uh, hopefully completed and ready for production. So what we'll do is we'll finish production on, on the first on the uh, the rig pack 60, then it'll go into production on the lure locker case. Uh, and then we've got a third case that we're, we're doing, which is going to be about half the size of the rig pack 60. Good deal. Uh, yeah. So uh, the lure locker case will hold uh, 12 of the lure lockers plus a full row of the reds or oranges or yellows. Well, I've, I've got a question for you, Glenn. Shoot. One, one, one of the things we like about our original one is that it floats. So if it yes. ever comes off the boat, the new ones float as well. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the nice part about EVA. It's uh, if you don't know what EVA is, it's actually a compressed foam. It's sandwiched between like a canvas or a, a fabric, um, and you can load up one of the rig packs five to ten pounds. If if it goes in the water, it'll float. Hmm. It'll float. Um, hey, so hey, uh, I want to. I want to. When we can, I'd like to give away some of these whisker bombs. You want to do something in the chat for that for me? Sure, we can do that. All right. What I'll do is I'll get a hold of Peter Dries because he's in charge of the uh, manufacturing for me now, and uh, I'll make sure whoever whoever wins them get a hold of me, and I'll make sure they get them. All right. Let me uh, reload it. Okay. Sorry, Glenn. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just had a thought. Yeah, that's 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 okay, Eddie. It doesn't happen very often. He's got to go with it when it does. Oh boy! Oh, <laughs> wow! Oh. Wow! He's now getting it on board. Yeah. Okay, uh, Eddie, go ahead and give me a number. Through what? Through a million? Uh, no, yeah. one through five. Sorry. <laughs> one through five. We already did two and three, so one. Because that's number not going to be this weekend. One. <laughs> All right, uh, number one, and the winner is Whisker Sticks Fishing. That's Tim. Tim Hardwick. In the chat room. Have Tim shoot me or Peter Dries a message, and I'll make sure I get some of those out to him to check out. Awesome. Man, that's a great deal right there. Thanks, Eddie. We appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I know the guys in chat appreciate it. You bet. I didn't win. I didn't. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's with the future of rig wrap, Glenn? You got any other any other innovation innovative products coming out soon? We got a lot of stuff we're working on. Eddie. Um, it's uh, it all takes time, and and I'll give you a little bit of back history, and everybody may find this a little interesting. The last February. The largest distributor, one of the largest distributors in North America, failed to pay an invoice that we sent them close to $100,000. And uh, in uh, November of last year, they went Chapter 11. So they hit us pretty hard. So we're slowly making our way back up and getting inventory and getting our development done. And uh, But it, it took a little bit of wind out of our sails. Well, you know, guys, guys like Doc and Lyle ain't getting any younger, so you better hurry up. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's flying. Doc, that's it's pretty brutal, man. I'm flying. used to it. Yeah, me too. It, it doesn't we, bother me anymore. <laughs> all we need is, is Dieter on here, and, and, and this this will start getting real slap happy. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. I seen, in, I seen in the chat where he said he was taking off his ponytail. Yeah, he so said he's going to cut off his ponytail next. I keep telling him, you know, I, I found this manufacturer in China that makes a baseball cap that has an oh, attached yeah. ponytail to it. And I told him he needs to get the Dieter Milhorn, you know, fishing logo on that and sell those. Yep. I think that's a great idea. I bet he'd sell three, four of them anyhow. Hey, wouldn't Luke, wouldn't Luke from Northwoods Angling look great in one of those? Yeah. <laughs> God, if, if he will make them, I'll buy Luke one of them. See, see, Dieter, is Dieter out there listening? I told you, Dieter, people will buy those things. 
<laughs> hey, I'm going to get one for Paul Blackwell because, you know, he's uh, <laughs> when we were at the Catfish Conference, he was going on and on about how he, how he could dance like Magic Mike. Well, the wolves came out. All the women at that table said, do it, do it. We want to see it. Do it, Paul. I've never seen anybody turn that red and leave that fast in my life. <laughs> oh, man. He's the first, the first man I've ever known that ordered nine, what was it, nine half shots? <laughs> nine, nine, uh, five ninths. Five ninth shots. You know what that is? No. Five shots, so, five and a half. You save so, money. You got to buy a round of shots for nine people. You have the, the cocktail waitress make five shots and split it up between nine cups. Hmm. Okay. Well, hey, you know, to each their own. We, it's, it's called being on a budget, I guess. No. We, we uh, went to Catfish Conference. We visited with Paul. We visited with Melinda and Brian Folsom. We visited with Matt Miles, Catfish Clothing. Got to meet some of these people that are, yeah, we, we met Dieter. Um, got to go out for dinner with them. It wasn't, it wasn't who you fished for. It wasn't what you used. It was that we were all catfish people and we had a blast and we laughed and we joked and, and sad I didn't get we, we gave each other a hard time about it. And, and we have nothing but love for, for all of those people now too yeah. after after meeting him so eddie's giving paul a hard time but hi paul did you guys <laughs> well, i think i think paul i think paul's gonna get even yeah oh, yeah, yeah. I, I i think you better watch your back <clears throat> as you yeah. guys well know um the catfish community is a pretty close-knit family and glenn i've uh, got a question sure so are you gonna are you planning on making any rib ra rig wraps that are bigger than the yellow than the big yellow ones or smaller than the little yellow ones? Is is this one big enough for you, Spence? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say a coffin, he said a rig wrap. Wow. <laughs> How big do you want it, buddy? How big do you want it? This is this I, is I, for I, this is for the big I, offshore I, stuff they use down here in Florida mostly. You know, guys go out and they spend like fifty to hundred dollars for a Wahoo uh, trolling rig. It's got a cable leader. They got a lot of money invested, and they got really no way to store them. And these work out real well because they can put them in here, and they can rinse it all out. So, but yeah, that's the biggest one we make, Spence. Is that big enough? Yeah, you want them bigger? <laughs> Do you, do you have a case for those? Not, you not one in a case. <laughs> not unless you yeah. got a slip in it. This is this is this is it. There's there's the handle. <laughs> hey, uh, Glenn. Uh, PD Fishing wants to know if your products are going to be in WalMarts in South Carolina. Um, the the cutters are in Walmart, and uh, so are the sinker slides. We want to try to get uh, the rig wrap products uh, in, in the Walmart as well, uh, uh, again. And, uh, you know, it just takes time. You know, it's funny because when rig wrap first came out, and quite frankly, even now, nobody really even knows what it is. Um, I can't tell you how many times I'll show this to somebody and they'll say, what is this for, dentures or birth control pills? Um, it, it, no, it, they... That's what, you know, but when I show them how it works, it's like, oh, my God, and they, you know, they've got to have it. So, you know, we're just uh, making our way little by little, you know, into the market and everybody getting educated to it. So, uh, um, you know, we take what we can get and, and uh, do the best we can with what we have. But uh, the sinkers, the sinker slides are going to be a huge hit. It's funny. I, I just dropped off everything to the distributor for Walmart um last week for the, for the sicker slides and i asked them i said how many how many are is walmart putting on a peg you know uh they're putting three on a peg per store i said that's gone in a weekend so we ended up taking almost the whole damn shipment that came in hmm. <laughs> so anyways little by little we're gonna get there that's right. And if, if you can't if you can't find it in in your local tackle shop, first of all, ask them for it. Secondly, check online for other you know dealers, um, you know that that have the uh, uh, the rig wrap products. 
And if you can't find it anywhere that you're you're comfortable with, you just go to rigwrap.com and we'll send it out to you there. Can they send rig wraps to other countries? Ask Glenn. Glenn, you yes. sell rig Okay. Like like California. Do you send them to other countries like California, Glenn? <laughs> yeah, it goes to yeah, California is kind of like another country these days, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'd send it to California. We uh, we have distributors in uh, in England, which handles all of Europe. We have a distributor in Russia, which really hasn't done much since the whole Russian economy's falling apart and their ruble is more or less worthless. Australia, um, so Canada, so we're you know we're getting there. Hey, Lyle, guess what time it is. I'm guessing it might be time to spin the old rig wrap prize wheel. Yep. I think you got to spin it at least one more time. Uh, Glenn, Glenn, give us a number one to five. Let's go with one. I love one. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, I know you do. That's why That's why I gave it to you, Lyle. And the winner is Jeremy Beecham. Way to go, Jeremy. Heck yeah. And let's just see what Jeremy wins. Cindy, hit that thing. Like that? <laughs> How come it's not clicking, Lyle? Uh, it looks like the uh, little pointer needs to be adjusted a little bit. It is hitting. Yeah. That thing's had the wheel spun off of it. Structure snakes. Jeremy, if you will contact BigRiverCatfishing.com and tell them you want some structure snakes on Catfish Weekly playing the Rig Wrap Prize Wheel game, they will get them right out to you. That's a great product. We use them all the time. Hang-ups are very, very minimum. Several different weights. You're going to love them. Contact Rusty Jackson. Tell him that you want some. We'll hook you up. You didn't have to fix it right then and there, Lyle. But. Hey, I, I want you to be happy with the noise that that oh, thing makes. Oh, oh man. man. Oh, boy. Oh, ah. You're going you're backwards. I think our little pointer might need to be a new one be made for it. It's It's um, been spun one way, and it's kind of folded. But if you go the other way, it still makes ah. it. Been, that thing's been okay. spun times. It, it really has been. It's been spun. Piece of piece of uh, an old old Tupperware tub just cut a piece of plastic out of it. An old one. Hell, we'll get one of Cindy's new ones out. I don't have Tupperware. Well, oh yeah. Good luck with that, Lyle. That's right. <laughs> they want to know if they need a promo code, Glenn. No promo code. All you do is go to go to rigwrap.com. On the home page, you're going to see a little banner for the pre-order special. Just click on that. It'll take you right to it. It's got air, all the details right there, and just order away. Now, if you order more than one, it's going to take you over the $50, which means now the shipping on top of that great deal is free. So, but it's, in fact, we're now up to 13 sold. And... Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna go they're gonna go fast. I, I knew this was good. I I can't tell you the hundreds of emails and messages I got constantly. Uh, do I need to go ahead and put my order in tonight for her? Yeah, said? I was gonna what? say. Well, me and me and Lyra are gonna come out on the short end of the stick, <laughs> and they're gonna be sold before we get off the air. That's right. Uh, <clears throat> I do have a question for Eddie, Ann, and Spencer. Do you guys do any night fishing? You like uh, now or just in general? In general. Um, in August, August generally is the biggest time that I'll night fish because of the heat where we're at. That's the hottest month we have. And I've found that the fish don't like to move during the day, but as soon as that sun goes down, they start prowling and, and they're hungry. Um, I'd say 90% of our fishing is done during the day. Yeah. Well, it's got so hot around here that I now have new lights on the new Lumacraft. So... It looks like night fishing is in our future. Doc, how about you? Do you you like fishing at night or during the day? Uh, 
I, I like doing both. I'd much rather do it during the daytime than I would at night. Uh, I won't fish the river at night. I have trouble with my eyes seeing things, but I will fish a lake at night. Unless if I'm with my it. if I'm with my partner and he likes to fish at night, then I'll let him drive the boat. But I have <laughs> trouble, you know, the shoreline lights. I keep thinking I'm coming up on the back of a boat. I'll see that white light and I think I'm coming up on the rear of a boat. Yeah. I got a you know that man. That's a good question for the chat. How many of you fish at night and how many don't? It's a yes or no question. Fish at night. The, the, the idea that I, catfish only fit at night went along for how long? You know, so many anglers only oh, fish yeah. at night. Oh, yeah. And now, I mean, we, we they, all day we'll catch fish. Obviously, there's going to be slower times, but uh, that that there's a lot of myths with catfishing that are starting to come to light and people are seeing that it's not all about chicken liver and going out at midnight. Yep. Yeah. Well, and everybody said you couldn't catch flatheads except at night. Lynn and I've been doing it for well over 20 years and catching flatheads during day because we don't like to fish at night. So can we do another well, I'm, uh I'm seeing I'm another? seeing the chat. There's a whole lot of yeses in here. Yep. Can we do another uh Giveaway in the in the um, comments for the for the chat, please. Yeah, hang on, man. Let me get, let me reload it. People go, people go in and out of the chat, so I I load up the newest. I still one of the things about night fishing for us is it is twenty degrees cooler and no sun beating down on you. Yeah, that's true. I do like that, but. I would prefer to fish the daytime if it's not squaldering hot. I want to. I want to do two different giveaways if you guys don't mind. Let's keep these guys interested. Maybe we can get a fish in the meantime. Okay, go ahead. Well, Matthew Miles and I teamed up with the Catfish Angler Tournament Series, and he sent me shirts uh, to sell at our events. And uh, I'd be willing to give away two of them um, right now. And uh, obviously, we're, we're going to be gone until next week. So when we get home, we can ship them out to you. So uh, you guys let me know how you want to do it. And, and we'll make sure we get a couple of shirts out to a couple of different anglers. I got them. I got them loaded up right now. I got uh, 69 people in the chat. Give me a number from 1 to 69. And I'll tell you who the winner is. 37. 37 country girl fishing that's one of them you say you got another one to give out yep all right give me another one 13. 13. Ah. is cat is catfish edition matt oswald <laughs> he's a good friend of ours <laughs> all right yeah. so they need to get a hold of you eddie yeah, on Facebook would be the best if they can. Okay. And remember, they're out of town till next week, so when they get back, they'll get you hooked up. Well, we'll, we'll hey. do one more. We'll do one more good giveaway, and we got to make this a little more complicated. But we'll give away a brand new um, Warrior Cat spinning rod. Ooh. Now, what, what are we going to make them do to, to win that prize? Oh man! Wow, you're going to give you're going to give away a rod and reel on I'm on the chat. I'm just giving away the rod. They got to get the reel. Oh, okay. It's the Gen 2 medium heavy uh, spinning rod that Warrior came out with. And I believe I have the Core Core Eva that I could give away. Wow, I'm telling you. There's a lot of people that left the chat that are going to really be upset. Yeah. You better be in the, if you're everybody that's in the chat, you better call whoever just left the chat and get them back in. This is a great prize. <laughs> This is like leaving a football game early and finding out they came back. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can if you want to, we can do it just like I'm loading it back up again. Give me a second here. You know, if we're gonna give stuff away, we might as well give away something else too. Uh -oh. So keep keep that keep that uh, chat list going there, John, Doc. Okay, I'm up to seventy five now. You're up to seventy five? Yeah, I see 80 watching. 
Hey, how about, uh, can we have Cindy pick a number this time? Sure. Cindy, one to 75. 70. 70, 70, 70. What do you better Charles, call my name? <laughs> Charles Venable. I believe he's here in Ohio. Right on. Way to go, Charles. Charles. Tell him shoot me a message and I'll get it out to him next week. Heck of a deal. That's hey, Lyle. Good. Lyle, you have you have you still have some of those bike lights handy? As a matter of fact, let me check. I think I do. Well, since we were talking about night fishing, I figured we might we might give one of those away in chat. What do you think, Doc? Yeah, that'll work with me. Go for it. You, you up for another give one? Give me a number. Yeah. Time for I can see it. Uh, one to seventy-five. One to seventy-five. All right, let's go with um, uh, fifty. Northeast Kansas fisherman is a winner. Northeast Kansas fisherman. Yep. Contact me, and I will send you out a bright light to get edit your way. But I will need yep. your address. Those bite lights are pretty neat. They snap right on your rod, last a long time. And they're yeah, you just got to learn to call them a bite light, not a bright light like the bite game light. when we were kids. Bite, bite, bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're pretty cool. I, I actually put one on a rod uh, before I took them to market and uh, uh, just let it blink <laughs> away. And it, uh, it blinked away for probably a good 10 days. Nice. So, yeah, twenty four seven. That's a that's a long time fishing at night. Yeah, and they got yeah, and and they got a re little replacement battery. You just go down to your local you know drugstore and grab another battery. But they're pretty cool. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, Tim just jumped in there. Can't let night fishing go undone. Give away a pair of whisker sticks too. <laughs> Not trying try to take anything away from you, Tim. <laughs> You want to go? The lights. Uh, hey TM, give me a number and give me a number in chat, and I'll I got it already up. Give me a few minutes. One to seventy-five. Carl Wells says we have a first timer watching in chat. Welcome, Austin. Glad to have you on the show. <laughs> Everybody's putting numbers up except Tim. <laughs> friendly competition glenn oh, no. yeah now now you know he had to do it now all right do something else what do you say 57 all right let me see who that is 57 is catfish obsession Catfish Obsession, get with Tim, Marin and Chat. He's got some Whisker Sticks lights for you. Boy, this place is popping tonight, buddy. Jerry says, how about one of the sample rig packs as a giveaway? <laughs> Jerry, I'm going to tell you, if he gives one of them away in chat before Doc and I get one, it's not going to be good. It's not who gonna want, who, who's making this, this uh, request? Jerry Dillard from Texas. Jerry, I wish I could, but I'll tell you a real funny story. About a year and a half ago, I sent up a fully loaded rig pack up to uh, Bill Dance. I wanted to get his opinion on it. Now, <clears throat> George Young is a member of our pro staff. So Bill Dance gets this fully loaded rig pack, loves it, takes it fishing with him with George Young. Goes, gets on the boat and says, hey, I got something I got to show you. This thing is great. George goes, what are you talking about? I've had one for, for a while. I'm under pro staff. Bill was not happy about that. So one of the four um, pre-production samples is going up to Memphis to Bill. He's the only one that gets one right now. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to run a contest here in the next couple of weeks. We're almost, we're 80, I think we're 8,600 8, likes on Facebook. I want to get to 10,000. If everybody helps us get to 10,000, we're going to run a contest and we're going to give away a fully loaded rig pack 
okay? We're going to give away a pair of cutters with it. We're going to give away, away a, a bulk pack of the sinker slides. We're going to give away bite lights. It's going to be a whole package of stuff once we get to 10000 Now, Now, Doc, I think we ought to be able to get in on that. What do you think, Ed, Annie? Don't you think we all ought to be able to get in on that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a, I'm telling you, I love the rig back boxes. I love the rig wraps, but the sinker slides and the scissors are my two of my favorite products. And yes. Scissors are really nice. That's, badass. That's just all you say about it. Yeah, those cutters took us a long time to get together. I can't, you know. But that's a heck of a deal. So all you got to do is tell all your buddies to, to like, to, to get on our. A Facebook page and to like us, and once we get to ten thousand, we'll run the contest. Now, that's a pretty good amount of money in that fully rigged up package. Oh, it's going to be, I would guess, one hundred and fifty, two hundred bucks worth of stuff. That's a heck of a deal. Tell your good people to sign up, and while you're at it, go ahead and like Catfish Weekly's YouTube page, and please subscribe if you like what we're doing. If you like the giveaways and the guests we have, we'd love to have you subscribe to our channel. Yeah, you guys do a great job, and I appreciate everybody's support. You and you, uh, Doc and, and Cindy. Um, you know, Eddie. So, you know, not so much, but you know. <laughs> and and Spencer's been doing a heck of a job, though. Hey, I, I'm here for the free ride, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was texting back and oh, forth oh. with uh, with with. Eddie and Ann uh, yesterday for Father's Day, and and uh, I asked them. I said, "So is is Ann driving, being that that it's Father's Day, so you can you know kind of kick back and relax?" And I don't know if I should even say how he responded. <laughs> I think we you know, can uh, pretty much figure what he responded with. I, I just and as I responded back to him, just you know, just for the record, you said that I didn't. <laughs> There was no profanities. It was all a safety no. hazard. It was what? A safety, hazard. A safety hazard. Safety hazard. <laughs> I keep drunk as I put on my oh. life jacket in the truck. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh. On the boat. It's it's quite an ordeal to travel. I drove for I drove for a couple hours yesterday. He did okay. let me behind the wheel for a little bit. Yeah. It was and fun. I didn't enjoy it. Oh, you didn't enjoy, you didn't enjoy driving? No. Oh, hell no. Yeah, but it was Father's <laughs> Day. Yeah, they you know, fathers don't mean much until they're driving, and then they mean the world. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you for driving this Father's Day. You're welcome. Yep. <laughs> Spence, Spence, you drive home. I don't have my driver's license yet, and I don't yeah. plan on getting it. <laughs> We'll see when you get a little bit older how that works out. You have to get your driver's license. Kick my feet up on the dash. Said yeah. what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. Well, Glenn, we really appreciate you coming on and telling us about all the new stuff you got coming out. Excited for you to get ten thousand likes and somebody to win that package. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, no, I and I appreciate the opportunity to show on everybody, and I, and as always, I I really you know appreciate everybody's support. You know, for rig wrap. If you haven't used tr tried rig wrap, you got to get out and try it. I mean, you're you're you know spend your time fishing, not rigging, like the banner says behind Lyle. That's right. You know, you'll you once you use them, once you use them, you'll never go back to doing anything else as far as your rig storage. That, it makes it a lot easier. They sure do. Hey, Spence, here's another one, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Hello? Uh. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I will, uh, I'm going to leave you guys to finish up. Thank you for the opportunity to allow me to introduce the new rig pack. Thanks. Remember. Yeah, in one. Go to rig, go to rigwrap.com, click on the uh, uh, the pre-order special, get them while they're hot because right now, yeah, we're, they're hot. <laughs> Good deal. I'm glad that it's working out. 
you guys are going to love the new cases. I love the old ones, so I know the new ones are better. They're going to be great. Yeah, go to go to facebook.com forward slash uh, rig wrap, and I've got a video up there. I went through the whole case in detail, so you'll you'll see every little little bit of it. So, uh, all right, so I'm out of here. Thank you very very right. much, Eddie Thank and you. Spencer. Always great to be with you. Thank you, Glenn. Well, yeah. not so much Eddie, but Ann and Spencer. <laughs> thank you, Glenn. We appreciate it. Doc, thank you. Well, thank you. I'm out. All right, buddy. Thank you. One of the great sponsors we have, and Glenn does so much for the sport of catfish and fishing in general. It's not just catfishing, but he's really been good for our sport. Hey, Lyle, uh, you said you had Chris Flores on next week, didn't you? I did. Yes. We, uh, uh, about a month or so ago, we met a, it was a little over a month ago, we met a kid, he got a motorcycle accident last year, and he's paralyzed on his uh, left side. And we took him, and, and we fished his, he fished his first catfish tournament ever. Um, I met him at Cabela's doing a seminar. He wanted to learn how to fish being handicapped now. So we took him out, and... There was a there were, I, I hit up some of our sponsors and catfish bubble gum sent him a package uh, warrior sent him a package hookers terminal tackle sent him a package and Chris Flores sent him one of them new rods that he has out That's and the generosity that was that was poured out from those guys was pretty neat and that kid is now he's he's hooked on catfishing and he can't wait to get out and do more so yeah. my 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 condolences my, my thanks to guys like Chris and I, I'm looking forward to seeing him next week on the show. Absolutely. And Doc, you know, we talked about this a lot. Yeah. That's what makes catfishing that much better deal than any of the other fishing sports. Uh, People are always stepping up. They just step up and make things happen. They really do. And that's, that's all. And that's some serious. And the thing that a lot of people don't realize that's some serious money that's, you know, that those guys are giving out. That's right. You know, that stuff does not come cheap. Nope. nope. It all costs money. And, uh, Eddie and Ann and Spencer, we thank you for giving the donations to prize winners tonight. Uh, it, it means so much. Didn't know you was going to do it. Glad you did. And I know the people that won the stuff will be thrilled with it. Uh, we was just happy to have you on the show. And uh, I didn't know that you was going to be on the Red River to what, Eddie, last week? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I think, man, that's that's a great deal for a great show. And it has been a great show. I've enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> Got to see a fish get get caught. Yep. I wish I wish we could have moved around a little more, but we'll we'll we go on live a few times this week. I'm sure to show what the Red River is capable of. Oh, well, there'll be some great fish caught up there this week. I'm. Yep. Glad. Good luck. Thank you. We should maybe next year you guys can maybe next year you guys can come out here and do it live and fish the tournament. Uh, I'd love to, your butt. I I'm not I'm not. Um, I'm not against going back up and fishing the Cats Incredible, that's for sure. I really had a good time up there. That's a great area and a lot of quality people up there, and they welcome me in just like they know you, whether they know you or not, and, and that's what makes traveling them long distances well worth doing it. Absolutely. That's why we keep coming back. Absolutely, yeah. And it's a, it's a long way for us, but uh, it's not 14 hours, but it's close. <laughs> I didn't think so. I thought it was like 11. But, uh, okay, before you go, Glenn, or no, I'm sorry, Glenn's already gone. Eddie, before you go, uh, people are asking how to get the, bomb, the bombs and that stuff. Um, like I said earlier, Hook Center USA took over production of it. If you go to hookcenterusa.com, uh, Peter Dries, he's the uh, uh, sales manager for the company uh probably i think the easiest way it's also on amazon so you can go to hookcenterusa.com or on amazon or if you know peter i'm sure he can work something out with you guys directly okay yeah a few people have asked about it how many many people you got in chat doc Uh, um looks like about seven uh, just a little bit ago i had 95 in there Oh, yeah, people were calling their friends. Get out now. <laughs> yeah. Let me see who I got. Let me see what I got. It only takes me a few minutes to grab all these. 
country girl that's viewers that are actually watching at this very second that you see in down there i've only got 39 in there right now well i'll tell you what uh we got one more little giveaway we'll do uh bradley's bite enhancer of catfish bubble gum they're a real good sponsor of ours i have a whole bunch of these i'll give away five to the next lucky winner when we get home this is their bite enhancer. You can, uh, it has a bunch of amino acids in it. It works really well for cats. You can soak it, you can spray it on. I prefer to soak my bait in it, and it works. It does work well. There's been days where if it wasn't soaked in the stuff, we didn't catch anything. Um, and Ann's catching a fish. Get it, Ann, get it. So let's go. Let's, let's run some numbers. Fish on. Oh, she missed it, I think. She missed it. Oh, no. See, I've seen the rod was bowed over. Uh, let's see here, Eddie. Give me one to 39. One to 39. Let's go 39. And the winner is Pamela Smith. Pamela Smith. Get with Eddie. Yeah, have her get a hold In of about me, a week. Get with Eddie White in about a week, and he'll be back home. That taps me out, man. I'm I'm going broke, so I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have got a big summer plan this year, and we was talking before the show. We're hoping that you make it to Mississippi River Monsters this year. It'll be a great time if you make it down there. We're we're really crossing our fingers. We can. It's not time. It's it's uh, just. More, more being able to have that money to make that trip. It's a long trip. It oh, is. Yeah. So if, if we go, we're going to go for two weeks. So we make that long trip worth it. If you do, you can fish both tournaments. Yep. That's yeah. exactly why I go down like that. Yep. It, it'd be a great time. I hope you can make it down there. We, we'd be, a, it'd be awesome time. We'd go out and have dinner and a few drinks, carry on, tell lies. I heard there was going to be a kegger at the house you rented. That's not true. <laughs> it is. I don't know about it, but I'm. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't. I don't know. You better talk to Dieter. He's been passing out invitations. Is that uh, right? Bless old Dieter's heart. Oh, you know. He's paying for it all. If Dieter's buying, that'll be fine. <laughs> I know. You know, we got this house deal with Jason Mathena, and Jason, he don't drink very little, and uh, you know. It lasts a long time if it had to be relied on Jason to drink a whole keg. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> Dwayne Buckridge says he'll bring the keg. It's might be getting started. <laughs> hey, you know, if I bring a keg from Montana, it'll be awfully warm. So I think you should provide it. Yeah, that might be right. I think we probably better pick it up down there. <laughs> it would be something. Hang on, catfish blow gonna be the several times in the world. Well, listen, guys, it's been great having you on the show with us tonight. We're running a little over our hour allotment, but I knew we would. Thank you hour 40. for sharing oh, nice. your boat with us tonight, and I'm glad we got to see you catch a fish. Yeah, yeah thank you. Had a blast. We appreciate it as always, man. We, we look forward to the next round and seeing you guys and all that good stuff. So. Uh, all right, good to see you. Some good times coming up. Venture don't catch all the fish. I can't promise anything. <laughs> That's all right. Good deal. Oh, wow. Thanks awesome. again for joining us. We appreciate it. Great live feed. Thank you for having us, guys. Yeah. yeah. Doc, have you got any uh, results or upcoming events? Yes, I do. Actually, I've got results. Flathead Blues, Hoover Lake. This was a three fish limit. First place, Joe Hatfield, Kyle Gibney, 47 pounds. Big fish, a 23 pound blue. Second, Ron, Don Hughes, and Evan, 26.2 pounds. And third, David Funk and Chris Marcy, 26 pounds. Upcoming events, I had Eric Tuscan get a hold of me tonight. He wanted to let everybody know August 18th, Charitable Cats Tournament.
go to Facebook. You can find it on there. Uh, if anybody's interested in it, Eric Tuscan is who is hosting it. And that's August 18th. And that's all I got, Lock. All right. How about Doc's tip of the week? Doc's tip of the week. Let me flip my paper over here so I don't forget. Okay, now that it's getting hot, a lot of the guys, and I've seen it on a lot of guys having problems or posting that their units keep going out where that sun is baking down on them. If you take a look at your units, you notice they got these big heat sinks on the back of them. That's to pull the heat out of the unit. But when you got hot weather like we got here right now, which is 95 degrees, it doesn't matter, you know, how big a heat sink back there. It's not going to pull that heat off that unit. So what I do a lot of times is I'll just take a towel and cover the unit up. It gives it a little bit of shade and it will keep it from heating up. So when that sun is boiling down like it is, just kind of, you know, just cover it up. Or if you have a bimmy top, put that up and uh, that will allow, allow that unit to cool down. And that's Doc's tip for the night. Great tip it is. Great tip. Next week, everybody, Chris Flores is going to join the show. We're going to do some more giveaways. Chris has a big giveaway he contacted me about doing on Catfish Weekly. We'll visit with Chris about a lot of things, but we're going to give something away. We're going to talk about catfishing, and he has a new guide service. We'll try to touch on all that. We'll again have Doc's Tip of the Week. We'll be spinning the rig wrap prize wheel. So if you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe, share our videos, and join our Facebook page. Till next week, for Doc Lang and Cindy Stokes, I'm Lyle, and thanks for watching Catfish Weekly. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it.